to examine efficiency in different market structures. So this is going to be the final lesson in a series of lessons on what we call theory of the firm in which we examine the competitive behavior of firms in market structures ranging from perfect competition to pure monopoly. In this lesson we're going to examine firms in three different market structures. The perfectly competitive firm in the graph on the left, the pure monopolist in the graph on the middle, and the monopolistic competitor in the graph on the right. Before you watch this lesson, you should have watched all the video lessons in which we introduce these three market structures and we introduce the diagrams that illustrate individual competitors in these three market structures. So before we get into our discussion about whether or not firms in these different industries are efficient, we must first define what is meant by efficiency. So there are actually two types of efficiency that can be determined in economics. The first type is known as productive efficiency. To determine whether a firm is productively efficient, we must determine whether or not that firm is producing in the least cost manner. In other words, do firms in the industry produce at the quantity at which their average total cost is at its lowest point? Sometimes this type of efficiency is referred to as technical efficiency, indicating that the firm is producing its goods in the most efficient way possible, minimizing its average total costs in the process. Productive efficiency assures that the goods price will be equal to the minimum average total cost of the firms in the industry. If the price that the firm can sell its output for is at anything greater than the minimum average total cost, then firms in an industry do not have an incentive to be productively efficient. They don't need to produce at the lowest average total cost if they can sell their good at a price higher than that. So when we look at the three firms here, we'll look at whether or not the price is equal to the minimum average total cost. The second type of efficiency is a slightly more abstract concept known as allocative efficiency. Allocative efficiency relates to the quantity of output in the industry and whether or not it is the socially optimal quantity. Now from previous units we learned that socially optimal quantity is achieved when the equilibrium output in a market occurs at the intersection of marginal cost and marginal benefit. Now we don't generally draw a marginal benefit curve on an individual firm diagram. However, we always draw a demand curve. And you'll recall from earlier in the course that demand represents the marginal benefit that consumers receive from the consumption of a good. So to determine whether or not a firm and the industry in which that firm competes is achieving allocative efficiency, we must determine whether or not marginal benefit equals marginal cost at the quantity at which the firms are producing. Another way of looking at this is to determine whether or not the price that the good is selling for is equal to the firm's marginal cost, since price represents the marginal benefits that consumers receive from the good. So let's begin our analysis now. Let's start by drawing some cost curves, some demand curves, some marginal revenue curves on each of these three graphs. Now we're going to illustrate each of these markets in its long run equilibrium state, meaning that there is no reason for firms to enter or exit the market given the current level of economic profits that the firms in the industry are achieving. So you'll recognize the shapes of these curves as I draw them. You'll notice that demand for a monopolist product is downward sloping indicating that the monopolist has price making power and that it is producing a unique product that no other firm is producing. You'll also notice that a perfectly competitive demand curve is horizontal indicating that the firm is a price taker and must accept the price determined in the market for its product. The monopolistic competitor is one of several firms producing similar products but it does have some price making power so demand is downward sloping but generally speaking it's more elastic since there are more substitutes than the demand for a monopolist's output. Marginal revenue will also be less steep than it is for the monopolist. So let's label all of these curves. In the perfectly competitive market we can see that the demand curve corresponds with the marginal revenue, the revenue the firm earns for the sale of each additional unit. Now this is determined by the price, which of course is established in the market for the good in which there are hundreds or maybe even thousands of identical firms producing an identical product. The monopolist demand curve, downward sloping, has a marginal revenue curve that lies below it. Because the firm is a price maker, it must lower its price to sell additional units. For this, for this reason, marginal revenue will always be lower than the price that the firm has sold its output for. The monopolistic competitor looks very similar to the monopolist. 
However, demand tends to be more elastic since there are more substitutes. So there's our demand and marginal revenue curves. The next thing we need is our cost curves. Now I'm going to assume that each of these firms in each market structure faces similar costs. Since we want to hold all else equal when determining whether or not a firm in an industry is allocatively or productively efficient. Finally, we must add our average total cost curves. Now remember, I said we're going to show each of these industries and the firms in the industries in long-run equilibrium. A perfect competitor in long-run equilibrium will earn zero economic profits, indicating that it will be producing where price equals average total cost. So our average total cost curve will look like this, and our monopolist will draw a similar average total cost curve. And in the case of a monopolist to competitor, firms in the long run will break even, indicating that average total cost will be tangent to the demand curve in the long run. If the average total cost were lower than demand in the long run, then firms would enter the market and demand would decrease for each individual firm. All of this was explained in previous video lessons. Now, recall that the profit maximization rule, we're assuming that all of these firms are profit maximizing, indicating that they're going to produce where their marginal cost is equal to their marginal revenue. So we just need to find the intersection of the MC and MR curves in all of these graphs and identify that as the equilibrium quantity. I'll label this the perfectly competitive quantity. And over here we've got marginal cost and marginal revenue. This is the monopolist quantity. To find the price the monopolist can charge, we go up to the demand curve and over. And the monopolistic competitor's quantity, where MC equals MR. And the price above, found by going up to the demand curve. Let's go ahead and label the average total costs of each of these firms as well. We can see that the monopolist's average total cost is slightly lower than its price, indicating that the firm is earning economic profits. Now this is possible because of the high barriers to entry in a monopolistic market. The monopolistic competitor, on the other hand, charges a price that's exactly equal to its average total cost. The reason the monopolistic competitor will not earn economic profits, as you will recall, is that there are low barriers to entry. So any profits that may have been earned in the short run were eliminated as new competitors entered the market and drove down the price. Notice, however, that for the perfect competitor, price is equal to average total cost as well, indicating that the perfect competitor is only going to break even in the long run. So we'll shade our area of economic profit for the monopolist, as is customary. And now we're ready to begin analyzing the degree of efficiency achieved in each of these three markets. So again, we need to look at the relationship between the price of the good in the market and the firm's average total cost, and the price of the good and the firm's marginal cost. If the price is equal to the minimum average total cost, then we know that the firms in a market are achieving productive efficiency. Since any cost higher than the minimum ATC will result in economic losses. Therefore, firms must produce at their lowest average total cost. Similarly, if we look at the relationship between price and marginal cost, we can determine whether or not the firms in the industry are allocatively efficient. Because if the price is any greater than the marginal cost, then we know that the marginal benefit is greater than the marginal cost and therefore resources are under allocated towards the good. This would be a form of market failure in fact. So let's begin with productive efficiency. All we're going to do now is look at each of these three graphs and ask the question does the price equal the firm's minimum average total cost? We'll start with perfect competition. Here we can see that in the long run equilibrium in fact the price equals the minimum average total cost. The reason for this, of course, is the fact that there are no barriers to entry and that each firm is producing an identical product. If the price were any higher than the minimum ATC, then the firms would be earning profits and new firms would be attracted to the market, reducing the demand seen by each individual firm and eliminating those profits until the point where the price equals the minimum average total cost. So perfect competition achieves productive efficiency. We can see that by the fact that the price will equal the minimum average total cost. Let's move on to monopoly. Does the price, as we can see here, equal the minimum ATC? In fact, it's quite clear that it does not. 
Now the minimum average total cost, of course, is found where the marginal cost curve intersects the average total cost curve. So here we can see that the minimum ATC is quite a bit lower than the actual price in the market. So price is greater than minimum ATC for the monopolist, indicating that the monopolist will not achieve productive efficiency. The rational, logical explanation for this is quite simple. When a single firm is the only producer of a product, there's no competition in that market. Without competition, there is no reason for the firm to produce in the most efficient or least cost manner. The lack of competition allows the firm to charge a higher price than it would if there was more competition. The higher price allows the firm to produce at an average total cost that is higher than its minimum average total cost. We can see that here. The firm's actual ATC is greater than its minimum ATC at the profit maximizing quantity of QM. Productive efficiency is not achieved by monopolistic firms. Let's move on to monopolistic competition. Looking at the monopolistically competitive firm, it might appear at first glance that in fact the firm is productively efficient. However, this would be a mistake. While the firm's price actually equals its average total cost at the profit maximizing quantity, it does not equal the minimum average total cost. Recall that ATC is minimized where marginal cost equals ATC. So the minimum ATC is found by going from the lowest point on the ATC curve over. And there's our minimum ATC. So in fact, the price is greater than the minimum ATC, indicating that the firm is productively inefficient. Despite the fact that the firm's price is equal to its average total cost, it is not equal to its minimum average total cost. So while these firms will only break even in the long run, they will not necessarily achieve productive efficiency. So of the three market structures we've looked at here, only perfectly competitive firms will achieve productive efficiency in the long run. Because there are barriers to entry and because the products produced by imperfect competitors are slightly differentiated, or in the case of a monopolist, totally differentiated from any other firm's output, the firms in these markets will not be forced to achieve productive efficiency due to the lack of competition and the barriers to entry that exist. So let's move on to allocative efficiency now. Do producers in each of these markets achieve allocative efficiency? Start with our perfect competitor. Here we can see that at the profit maximizing quantity of QPC, the firm's price is equal to its marginal cost. We can say that the perfect competitor is allocatively efficient. With free entry and exit from a market, perfectly competitive markets in the long run will achieve a level of output at which the supply equals the demand. The marginal cost of the producers in the industry equals the marginal benefit that consumers receive from the good. This is what we call the socially optimal quantity. Perfect competitors are allocatively efficient. Moving on to monopoly. Does the price of the good equal the marginal cost? Well, to find out what the firm's marginal cost is at a quantity of QM, we must go up to its marginal cost curve and draw a dotted line over. We can see here that the marginal cost is much, much lower than the price, indicating that resources are under allocated towards the monopolist output. Now this makes sense. If there's only one firm producing a good, that firm has no incentive to produce the socially optimal amount of that good. The goal of individual firms is not to maximize social benefit or social welfare, it's to maximize their own profits. And they do that insofar as that they can restrict the output in the market to a quantity at which the price is higher and at which the price is higher than their average total cost. In other words, they're earning profits. We can see on this graph what the socially optimal quantity would be. It would be where the demand equals the marginal cost. It would be right here. So the socially optimal quantity is where demand equals marginal cost. We can see, however, that the monopolist is not going to produce that. They're going to produce at a lower quantity, charge a higher price to maximize their profits. Monopolists are allocatively inefficient. Not enough of a monopolist output will be produced, at least according to what is socially optimal. Finally, let's look at monopolistic competition. Does the monopolistic competitor achieve allocative efficiency? The answer is no. We can go up to the marginal cost curve, draw a dotted line over, and we can see that the price is greater than the marginal cost. 
the monopolistic competitor is not achieving allocative efficiency for the same reason that the, that the monopolist is not. As long as firms have some price making power, as long as firms face a downward sloping demand curve, they will choose to produce at a quantity that is less than where marginal benefit equals marginal cost or where demand equals marginal cost. They will restrict their output in order to maximize their profits. So let's do a recap of what we've looked at today. We have defined productive efficiency and we have defined allocative efficiency. We have examined perfect competition and imperfect competition. We have seen that only in the case of perfectly competitive industries will both allocative and productive efficiency be achieved. Only when there are no barriers to entry and when the products being produced are identical to each other, when all the characteristics of perfect competition are met, we will achieve the socially optimal quantity of output where society's marginal benefit equals the marginal costs of the producers in the industry. In addition, only in perfect competition will firms be required to produce at their lowest average total cost in order just to break even. If firms have any price making power whatsoever, as in the case of monopolists and monopolistic competitors, they will choose to produce less than the socially optimal quantity in order to maximize their own profits. In the process, these firms are not required to produce at their minimum average total cost, indicating that imperfectly competitive markets are both allocative and productively inefficient. Now this might remind you of something we studied much earlier in the course called market failure. In fact, imperfect competition represents a type of market failure since resources will ultimately be under allocated towards the goods produced in imperfectly competitive markets. In reality, most markets are imperfectly competitive. There are very few examples of perfectly competitive markets in this world. Does this mean that most markets are market failures? Well, that kind of depends on your perspective. If you look purely at the relationship between marginal benefit and marginal cost, then yes, technically speaking, most industries are market failures. However, there are many benefits not considered when we make that conclusion. For example, imperfectly competitive firms have a strong incentive to differentiate their product. They often do this through customer service or through innovation or through uh, product development, which actually benefits consumers. If the world consisted of industries that were all perfectly competitive, there would be no variety for consumers to choose from and everybody would wear the same clothes and drive the same cars even have the same haircuts. This is not the kind of world we want to live in. Imperfect competition, while it is technically inefficient and allocatively inefficient, actually provides many benefits for consumers in the form of innovation, product variety, customer service, and other benefits that we derive from the competitive nature of monopolistic competitors. That wraps up this lesson on efficiency in different market structures. Thank you for watching.